So before I begin, I would like to thank ASAP Science for giving me this video idea. They are basically a science-based YouTube channel and they create some awesome and cool videos. So if anyone is interested in this class, please go check them out or subscribe to them. They are, uh, again, really cool, so I really recommend it. Uh, so let's get this started. So for my genetics project, I chose thalassemia. So what is thalassemia? Well, thalassemia is a group of inherited blood disorders that affect the person's ability to produce hemoglobin, resulting in anemia. If some of you don't remember, hemoglobin is a protein in red blood cells that carries oxygen and nutrients to cells in the body. About 100,000 babies are born with thalassemia worldwide, which occurs frequently in people of Italian, Greek, Middle Eastern, Southern Asian, and African ancestry. So, there are two types of thalassemia. There is alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia. The chances of getting alpha or beta depends on how many of the four genes of alpha globin or two genes of beta globin are missing. These globins are molecules that hemoglobin are consisted of. The alpha thalassemia involves the genes HbA1 and HbA2, two gene IOC, and so four alleles exist. It is also connected to the deletion of chromosome 16. Beta thalassemias are due to the mutations in the beta globin gene on chromosome 11. The severity of diseases depends on the nature of the mutation. So how and why does one get thalassemia? Well, thalassemia is passed down to children by parents who have the mutated gene in an autosomal recessive manner. A child who only receives one mutated gene from the parent will be a carrier of this gene but will not necessarily have thalassemia, which is called thalassemia trait. Most carriers live healthy and completely normal lives. However, a child who receives two mutated genes, one from each parent, will receive the disease. A child of parents who carry the mutated gene has a 25% chance of receiving two trait genes and developing the disease, and a 50% chance of being a thalassemia trait carrier. Well, what are some symptoms that can occur by thalassemia? Well, symptoms of thalassemia consist of iron overload, bone deformities, enlarged spleen, slowed growth rates, and heart problems. Iron overload can occur from the disease itself or frequent blood transfusions. Too much iron can result in damage into the heart, liver, and endocrine system which includes glands that produce hormones that regulate processes throughout the body. Bone deformities. Thalassemia can make the bone marrow expand, which causes bones to widen. This can result in abnormal bone structure, especially in the face and skull. Bone marrow expansion also makes bones thin and brittle, increasing the risk of broken bones. Enlarged spleen. Thalassemia is often occupied by the destruction of large number of red blood cells and the task of removing these cells causes the spleen to enlarge. Slowed growth rates. Anemia can cause a child's growth to slow. Puberty also may be delayed in children with thalassemia. Heart problems. Diseases such as congestive heart failure and abnormal heart rhythms may be associated with severe thalassemia. Unfortunately, there's no cure for thalassemia, but as for treatments, there are several ways you could get treated. You could get a splenectomy, which is a surgical procedure to remove your spleen in an effort to not have the spleen destroy as many red blood cells. Or you could go through chelation therapy, which is a chemical process in which synthetic solutions are injected into the bloodstream to remove heavy metals and or minerals from the body. You do this to get rid of excess iron in your blood. Or you could do a red blood cell transfusion. This is a type of transfusion which increases a patient's hemoglobin and iron levels while improving the amount of oxygen in the body. Scientists are working to develop a gene therapy that may offer a cure for thalassemia, such as a treatment might involve inserting a normal beta globin gene, the gene that is abnormal in this disease, into the patient's stem cells 
the immature bone marrow cells that are the precursors of all other cells in the blood. Another form of gene therapy could involve using drugs or other methods to reactivate the patient's genes that produce fetal hemoglobin, which is the form of hemoglobin found in fetuses and newborns. Scientists hope that spurring production of fetal hemoglobin will compensate for the patient's deficiency of adult hemoglobin. Anyways, that's it for thalassemia. I thank you all for watching and I wish you all a good day.